photographer will be taking the photo. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2015 Calgary Awards. Tonight's presentation is being broadcast live by Shaw TV. Shaw has broadcast these awards since 2000, and the City of Calgary appreciates their continued support of Calgary's premier citizen recognition program. For those of you following us on Twitter, whatever that is, the hashtag, whatever that is, is hashtag YYC Awards, and I have only used it once so far. And I'm thrilled tonight to be joined by a number of my City Council colleagues, six of whom will be assisting in presenting tonight's awards. A special welcome, of course, to all of our award recipients. Without you and without your tremendous contributions to the community, our city would not be what it is today. The Calgary Awards began in 1994 as a centennial project to commemorate Calgary's 100th year as a city and to recognize outstanding citizen achievements. This program gives the city the opportunity to recognize these contributions which improve our community and which make change in the lives of everyone here. So this year, if you're doing the math, marks the 21st year of presenting the Calgary Awards. Before we get started, I would like to recognize this year's sponsors. Please hold your applause till the end, but they include at the platinum level, the 17th Avenue Retail and Entertainment District and Oil City Press. At the gold level, the University of Calgary. At the silver level, Husky Energy. And at the bronze level, Cine Audiovisual. A big thank you to all of our sponsors. <laughs> Selecting the award recipients is, as you can imagine, a very difficult task. All of the nominees are worthy of recognition. And I want to say, on behalf of my colleagues on City Council, on behalf of the award juries, and on behalf of all Calgarians, we'd like to congratulate every one of the nominees for their outstanding demonstration of community spirit and of pride. Let's get started with the awards. We begin this evening with the Award for Accessibility, and I would like to invite Councillor Sean Chu up to present this award. Thank you, Mayor. This award recognizes building of facilities that have significantly exceeded the minimum requirement of the Alberta Building Code for accessibility by persons with disabilities. 
congratulations to Mount Royal University, Taylor Center for the Performing Arts, this year's award recipient. Now, please look at uh, the videos. Opening in our city last year, the Taylor Center for the Performing Arts at Mount Royal University is the first major performance center to be built in Calgary in 30 years and is named for the principal donor, Don Taylor. This state-of-the-art facility features multi-use spaces to accommodate private lessons, rehearsals for ensembles of all sizes, and includes a dedicated wing for the Mount Royal Conservatory's early childhood music program. The Bella Concert Hall is the heart of the center, providing an intimate atmosphere for audiences to enjoy world-class performances. From its conception to completion, there was a strict adherence to building codes and accessibility standards, and in many cases, the requirements were exceeded. Safety considerations were paramount in understanding the movement of people at very specific times. Among the accessibility details, the entrance points to the building and internal pathways provide barrier-free access. There are provisions for light and sound control. Public washrooms and all receptacles and dispensers offer unlimited access. And the Bella Concert Hall features 20 wheelchair seating spaces. In its effort to create a community building that is accessible and enjoyed by performers, students and patrons, the Taylor Center for the Performing Arts far exceeds all expectations. To accept this award, would Melanie Rogers from Uni uh, Mount Royal University please come forward? Thank you. Melanie? Thank you. <laughs> Will Mayor Nanshi please come forward to present the next two awards? Okay. That's what I thought, Melanie. My mistake. Sorry, everyone. Melanie, could you please come forward? Thank you so much. Thanks very much, everyone. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure uh, to accept this award on behalf of Mount Royal University and specifically on behalf of President Dr. David Dougherty, who's unable to join us tonight because he's traveling. We also share this honor with several building partners, uh, Pfeiffer Partners Architects, Sahuri and Partners Architecture, Canna Management, and all of our building partners. The Taylor Center, for the performing arts was built for the community and with the community in mind. And we know that our community needs to be able to access the facility for performances and for music classes. Just over a year ago, we opened the doors to the Taylor Center for the Performing Arts and we welcomed 1,200 of our closest friends for our grand opening celebrations. And many of those guests were in wheelchairs or had other accessibility requirements. And that evening, our guests, our very special guests, told us that they found the building to be very accessible. And they felt welcome, and that made us feel very proud. So we know that the Taylor Center for the Performing Arts is part of a vibrant art scene in this city, and our entire city needs to be able to access that art scene. So on behalf of Mount Royal University, thank you very much for this tremendous honor. Again, let's do this again. Thank you, Melanie. And would Mayor Nanshi please come forward to present the next two awards. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Chu. We'll get it right by the end of the evening, don't worry. It's now the part of the evening where we present the Environmental Achievement Awards. 
These awards recognize achievements in advanced technology, conservation, enhancement, education, stewardship and promotion that serve to reduce our impact on or restore the city's natural environment. The first award in this category is the Educational Institution Award, presented for exemplary conduct or for an innovative environmental policy project or activity. Our worthy recipient this year is the University of Calgary Faculty of Law for the Environmental Law Clinic. Established in 2011, the Environmental Law Clinic provides an integrated program of benefit to law students, to environmental groups with limited resources to access legal representation, and to the community as a whole in the protection and improvement of the environment. A credit course within the faculty. Up to 12 students each fall and winter semester are given a clinical file, at least one clinical file, related to public environment law in Alberta. The focus of the curriculum is on student research and educational opportunities to include litigation skills and public interest advocacy. Working with nonprofit organizations in Alberta, such as Water Matters and the Alberta Wilderness Association, the provision of free legal advice can make the difference between the ability of these organizations to champion a cause or not. In the four short years since its inception, the program has assisted numerous groups in bringing forth change. The Environmental Law Clinic serves to educate and inspire a new generation of lawyers to bring environmental issues to the forefront and to achieve positive change of great benefit to our city and to our province. I'd love to invite Sean Fluker, the Associate Professor from the Faculty of Law, forward to accept this award. Thank you. Did you want to say something, Sean? Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honour and a privilege uh, to be able to combine legal education uh, with community service and um, by all accounts uh, the clinic's been a, uh, a joy to work in and, and uh, has certainly enjoyed a lot of success in its uh, short four years. Um, I would like to thank the City of Calgary for selecting our program uh, for this prestigious award and for this wonderful evening. Um, of course, I wouldn't be standing here before you this evening if it weren't for the support uh, of my family who are sitting over there, uh, the university, the faculty, uh, and my <coughs> excuse me, and my colleagues. Uh, in, in particular, I'd like to mention uh, Professor Ewan Saunders, who, who back in 2010, 2011, uh, really went out of his way to ensure that this clinic uh, found its way uh, onto the curriculum. Uh, so, so thank you, Ewan. Uh, and as a final remark, I'll just say I'm, I, I'm really just one person in a, in a big scheme and I'm, I'm really accepting this uh, award on behalf of uh, all the law students that have uh, come and gone into this program. So thank you very much. I'll be back shortly to present another award in the environmental achievement category, but right now it's my great pleasure to introduce Councillor Brian Pincott to come and present the next environmental achievement award. Thanks, Mayor Nenshi. Um, so I'm here to prevent, uh, present an award in the environmental achievement area uh, to a not-for-profit organization. It's awarded to a non-government, non-profit for outstanding uh, environmental achievement. And this year's recipient is the Center for Affordable uh, Water and Sanitation Technology, or as we all know it, COST. Nothing is more crucial, crucial in our life uh, than water. For billions around the world, this is a daily struggle and a daily concern. Helping change this is Calgary-based charity, COST. In the 1990s, University of Calgary engineer Dr. David Manns invented a biosand filter that was easy to use and cost effective, recognizing that this technology could provide clean drinking water in developing countries. Camille Dow Baker and Dr. Manns founded Cost in 2011, uh, 2011, 2001. 
15 years, not five, to recognize its impact, over 10,000 people in 78 countries around the world have been trained on how to build these water treatment solutions using their locally available materials. And, and that has in turn assisted 11 and a half million people around the world get access to clean and safe water. Collaborating with organizations, governments, and the United Nations, cost programs are facilitated in 18 languages. Celebrating their 15th uh, anniversary this year, we'd like to congratulate COST for their extraordinary efforts in providing clean water around the world. Wachana Curry, come on, uh, CEO of COST, come on up and receive this. Calgary, thank you so much for this award and for everything that you've done for cost and the world. Calgary is our home and our cause is global. Around the time that cost was established, there was a little girl in Haiti whose brother had died due to waterborne diseases. Every five minutes, three children under the age of five die to unsafe water. This little girl's family was able to get themselves a water filter for their home. This filter was designed right here in Calgary. And as a result of cost training, it was built by an organization in Haiti. This little girl called the water that had killed her brother the water of death. She called the water from the filter the water of life. COST now provides services to thousands of organizations in almost every country of the world, reaching millions of people with safe drinking water, so that people like this little girl in Haiti can grow, learn, go to school, earn a living, and be contributing members of their communities. It is an honor to be recognized by our home city. On behalf of COST and everyone that we serve, thank you. Thank you, Shauna, the little girl, the little not-for-profit that makes a difference all around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, next presentation is to the recipient of the City of Calgary, W.O. Mitchell Book Prize. So we've got a vignette, so please direct your attention to the screens to hear from Ty Mitchell to talk about this year's recipient, my friend, Eugene Stickland, for his novel, The Piano Teacher. The City of Calgary established this book prize in honour of my grandfather, writer W.O. Mitchell. Started in 1994, the award recognizes literary achievement by Calgary authors. The $5,000 prize is coordinated through a partnership between the City of Calgary, Writers Guild of Alberta and a sponsorship from 17th Avenue Retail and Entertainment District. I am pleased to present this year's W.O. Mitchell Book Prize to Eugene Stickland for his book, The Piano Teacher. As his debut novel, The Piano Teacher, tells the story of a reclusive and eccentric concert pianist who is drawn back into the real world when he agrees to give piano lessons to a seven-year-old girl, while at the same time preparing for, to perform the second Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto. Written in first-person diary form, the framework of the novel is three journals. It is through the journal entries that we are exposed to the narrator's personal probes and affirmation of his own existence and values. The success of the novel lies in Eugene's skillful narrative crafted in stream of consciousness and creating a genuine tone and authenticity for his character. With a mix of nostalgia and subtle humor, his novel offers profound reflections on contemporary life. A renowned playwright and poet, Eugene is no stranger to the local art scene. Arriving in Calgary in 1994, he spent 10 years at Alberta Theatre Project as playwright in residence, where he produced six plays while at the same time writing for other theatre companies. He wrote a weekly column 
for the Calgary Herald from 2004 to 2009, chronicling life as an artist in corporate Calgary, and in 2010 became writer in residence at St. Mary's University College, which led to the genesis of his novel. Congratulations, Eugene Stickland and The Piano Teacher. I, uh, I read The Piano Teacher over my summer holidays and I can recommend it to everybody. It, uh, it's a great journey and uh, it's got Eugene's voice all over it. It's wonderful. I'm really delighted to present $5,000 cash prize as well as a leather-bound book to Eugene Stickland, this year's recipient of the W.O. Mitchell Award. So it looks like a master's dissertation or something. It's beautiful, thank you. This is a, a great honor. Um, really great because Brian Pincott, uh, you may not know, he's a, a city councillor now and is an amazing uh, lighting designer and designed at least three of my plays at ATP, including my play A Guide to Morning, which is I think the most uh, beautiful lighting design I've ever seen anywhere in the world. So thanks Brian, good to be here. Uh, just a few people I'd like to know that you know more about me than I think I know myself because that's that was very current that video <laughs> so, like done this afternoon I think <laughs> I'd like to uh, thank Jackie Bourguez the designer of the book and who ended up doing way more than she should have proofreading and whatnot uh, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts for a generous uh, grant that keep, kept me going while I was doing it St. Mary's College that's given me a residency for quite a while. Uh, my brother Tom and his wife Allison, who paid for a lot of this. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that my daughter Hannah is back in town from Europe after being away for three years. It's wonderful to have her here. Um, and it's also an honor in particular, I suppose, to be given an award uh, in the name of another Saskatchewan writer who came to Calgary, found a home, found family, found a reading audience, and that's W.O. Mitchell. And I just leave the last words to him. And he said, the arts are not a luxury. They, they're how we know we're not alone. Thanks very much. Eugene, you've given us so many words. Thank you and congratulations. And thank you as well, again, to the uh, 17th Avenue Retail and Entertain Entertainment District for their sponsorship. Marinci, you're up next. All of the award recipients tonight and all of the awards are incredibly special and they've done great things for the community. But this next one is one that is particularly important to me personally. It's the Signature Award. The Signature Award is presented to an exceptional person whose activities have brought significant recognition to our city. And our recipient this year is someone who's been part of my life since I was 17 years old. If you're doing the math, that was 12 years ago. As a mentor, as an inspiration, and as a true personal hero. Please direct your attention to the screens to learn a little bit about this year's recipient, Mr. Richard Haskane. As one of Calgary's most notable philanthropists, Dick Haskane is well known for his generosity and commitment to secondary and post-secondary education, Alberta heritage, and arts and culture in our community. Born in Gleeson, Alberta, Dick credits his strong work ethic, upstanding principles, and generous nature to his parents. Working alongside his father at a very young age in the butcher shops they owned, during the Depression years, his family helped out many people in their community with both food and finances. Graduating with a Bachelor of Commerce from the University of Alberta, 
Dick studied to become an accountant and rose to the ranks of corporate Calgary. His interest in business culminated in the generous donation of funds to the University of Calgary's Faculty of Management, renamed the Haskane School of Business in 2002. His contribution to the growth and sustainability of Heritage Park is unprecedented. He has supported several exhibitions over the years, and the mercantile block at the entrance of the park bears his name. Going beyond his financial support, Dick's most valued role has been as leader, mentor, and fundraiser through the many positions he has held. Through the generous donation of land located at the east side of the Bears Paw Reservoir, the Hiscane Legacy Park will preserve a piece of the beautiful Alberta landscape for generations to enjoy. Dick's accomplishments through the years have not gone unrecognized. He has received many awards, including the Officer of the Order of Canada in 1997 and Alberta Order of Excellence 2006, as well as numerous business awards. In the presentation of this particular award, we would be remiss in not mentioning Dick's wife and trusted companion, Lois. Together, they continue to embody the strength, spirit, and energy that is Calgary, Alberta. Uh, Dick and Lois, thank you for everything you've done and you continue to do every day for the people of this city. And man, oh man, that park is going to be amazing. I'd like to invite Dick Haskane up. I did. I was going to ask you about that. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, I've uh, been accustomed to calling you more like a student. <laughs> the relationship goes back, as he said, many years. He was a little wrong in the arithmetic. It's, I think it's like about 20 years, but we'll forgive him for that because he's a politician and I'm not. <laughs> in any event, I got to know him when I was chairman of the board of the University of Calgary. And of course, as you probably know, the university boards <clears throat> are made up of 18 people and uh, Two of the representatives are students, one from the undergraduate school and one from the graduate school. Well, we've seen some very talented students come by, and this particular mayor of ours was a student representative representing <coughs> the undergraduates at that, that time. So uh, he, of course, did a super job. I, I won't polish it too much, but he's been outstanding. He was outstanding even then. He, was a great competitor in debates in the university, won awards for the university. <clears throat> and many of you know Ann McKay. Ann and I were, of course, on the board, and we shared our opinions on a lot of things. And one thing we did agree upon, and we we're proud of that, we said, this young guy is going to go somewhere. He's going to be in public life because he was a wonderful speaker, smart, and yet very polite, very, very convincing. So the rest is history. So I am so proud of what he's done as a mayor. Of course, after the Haskane School of Business treatment, he then, of course, went on to Harvard and then came back home here and taught for a while. But he's such an outstanding, capable person. And we talked about the award being global. I don't know anybody in this room, quite frankly, there's any more global than him. Here is the mayor of a city of just over a million. And how many hundreds of cities around the world have, have a population of a million? And he's been invited to Davos the most international event that I can ever imagine. He's been there twice and headed committees now for our city of Calgary to get the recognition of our mayor to do that is simply outstanding. And I think he should be congratulated. He's a great, great job. So give this guy a hand. So I guess the other thing that they we're obviously proud about at the School of Business, we have our dean here, Jim DeWald, and he's done a perfect job. But before that, there were other people who deserve a lot of recognition for what this school has done. We have, for example, Al Dewar, our former mayor, who's a graduate of the MBA program there. 
We've got some of the best business leaders in Canada. We have two big companies, and of course, <laughs> I'm a little bit biased here, but the two big companies that are so outstanding in our, in our society today are Enbridge and TransCanada. The current chief executive and the former chief executive of TransCanada were graduates from the business school. Hal Quisley and Russ Gerling. And then we have Enbridge, exactly the same thing, an outstanding company. The current chief executive is an outstanding young, an accountant, which is even better. <laughs> Al Monaco, and before that, of course, was Pat Daniel. So those are two or four examples I've given in the business world and a couple in the public world. And so I'm just proud to have received this award. I didn't contribute much to it, but uh, Lois and I have been here uh, for 82 years in this uh, place. We love it. It's the best place in the world to be. And I want to thank you so much for this recognition and honor. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dick. I was not expecting him to talk about me. Tonight is my day to give the awards. <laughs> but I will do that right now. Let us go back to the Environmental Achievement Awards. And the final Environmental Achievement Award for tonight is the Corporate Award, which is presented to a Calgary business for innovative and or exemplary, and I would say both, environmental conduct. And this year's recipient is Hyatt Regency Calgary. Please turn your attention to the screens to learn more about their wonderful work. From the executive leadership team through to the frontline employees, a commitment to eco-consciousness hospitality is a priority at the Hyatt Regency Calgary. As an early adopter of sustainability programs, it was one of the first large hotels in Canada to support renewable electricity and incorporate green energy into its daily operations. With the use of Bullfrog Power, their energy source comes from wind generators located near Pincher Creek. Water saving measures are also implemented throughout the hotel. Extending this eco-consciousness to their meeting and convention business, meeting planners are given economic incentives to follow practices such as the use of reusable drink containers. To manage food and beverage waste, the hotel utilizes a compost program which benefits Alberta farmers and gardeners. The philosophy behind their culinary program is to use natural, local and sustainable food sources. This includes their own rooftop garden. The Hyatt Regency Calgary was one of the first hotels to build one. Going beyond the operation of the hotel, they also promote green transportation with complimentary bicycle rentals in the summer and two electric vehicle charging stations have been installed in the parkade. When we think of a hotel as a mini city that operates around the clock with an ongoing turnover of guests, we recognize the significance of the Hyatt Regency Calgary in reducing their environmental footprint and setting an example for both staff and guests. That is terrific. Please join me in welcoming Samir Mohandas from Hyatt Regency Calgary. Well, uh, thank you, City of Calgary, for uh, recognizing us as the leaders in sustainability in the corporate category. Uh, I'm incredibly proud to receive this award on behalf of Hyatt Regency Calgary and my wonderful team sitting out there on my left, if you can wave your hands up there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely an honor. It's absolutely an honor. And we'll definitely uh, display this award uh, to our, all our stakeholders, all our guests, all our employees, associates, and absolutely make them a part of this celebration. Um, a lot has been spoken on the video. I think um, if I have to conclude, sustainability is all about fending today's needs and protecting the future needs uh, of, of, our, of, our, uh, uh, of our generation. So it's, it's also defined by the triple bottom line, as we say, which is uh, a social, uh, which is environmental, and which is economical. 
I'm really proud to say that the foundation with which uh, we operate Hyatt Regency Calgary, where we actually care for all our people so that they can care for their best, is actually the first bottom line of sustainability. Our long-term environmental plans that we have towards environmental sustainability is the second. And I think the economical sustainability is actually the outcome of both of these. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy to receive this award. And uh, I think last but not the least, all the nominees under this category, under the corporate category, I think uh, you deserve probably a thank you as well, because some way or the other, you have made a positive impact on the triple bottom line, making Calgary, Alberta, and Canada a more sustainable place. So thank you, everyone. It's my pleasure now to invite Councillor Richard Putmans forward to introduce the Community Achievement Award category. Richard. The community, good evening. The Community Achievement Awards recognize outstanding contributions and achievements in community life and provide an opportunity to honor Calgary's exceptional citizens. The Arts Award goes to an individual whose artistic accomplishments have brought recognition to Calgary and contribute to developing stronger, communities. Linda Kundert Stoll has been well respected as a teacher in the community for the past 35 years and amongst her professional designations is a sought after festival adjudicator and royal conservatory examiner and music editor. Through her passion and dedication to music and education, in 1993 Linda led the formation of the Calgary Arts Summer School Association which has grown into a comprehensive summer arts program representing numerous artistic disciplines. With its diverse and innovative programming, this Calgary Summer School has attracted more than 5,000 participants from, a far, from as far away as Europe, Asia, and South America. During the first Honan's Piano Competition in Calgary, Linda provided her expertise in providing and establishing pedago the pedagogy masterclasses for teachers, which 24 years later remain a feature of the festival. Linda's dedication to music education has touched the lives of students, artists, audiences, making her an invaluable asset to the art scene in Calgary and a most deserving recipient of this award. Linda, please come forward to accept the award. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely pleased and honoured to receive this award, and I'd like to thank the City Awards Committee and my nominator, Dorothea Johansson, and all of those who wrote beautiful support letters. You made it happen. When I was 16 years old, I taught my first piano student and decided that I would become a piano teacher. And after going to school and learning what hard work that was, I decided that I would like to give as many people in the city of Calgary and elsewhere the opportunity to have incredible education. And so I have personally taught over 300 students and over 30 of them have ARCT diplomas and are, are, are out there teaching themselves. I like to thank my own music teachers for their great knowledge that they shared with me. And I thank my families, the Kunderts, the Jorgensons and the Stalls for their support through uh, my time of education and work and travel. And especially to Derek, who never seemed to see me in July while the Calgary Arts Summer School was taking place. That was 23 years ago with the help of Janice Dahlberg and many others when we started this camp. We had two programs, Piano Camp and an Introduction to the Arts, and we now have seven plus one concert recital. I hope that you will check us out, particularly in the 25th year in 2018. I'd like to say thank you to the board members, my admin team, all the fantastic instructors, and so many supporting businesses who share a grand piece in that beautiful award. So I'd like to thank you for helping me to realize that I am reaching my goal. Thank you.
Thank you, Linda, and, and congratulations. I know our family enjoys the piano a lot, so we're very inspired to be with you tonight. Our next award, the Commerce Award, is presented to an individual or business for pr improving business opportunities, making significant community, community or industry contributions. Our recipient this year is Bleeding Art Industries. I might say because we've worked together, this is a very exciting but scary company. Please direct your attention to the screens to hear more about this company. The company's tagline, We Create Cool, genuinely describes the work of the Calgary-based business, Bleeding Art Industries. Founded in 2002 by Becky Scott and Leo Weiser, the company provides services in the design and manufacture of strikingly realistic props, prosthetics, sculptures and environmental pieces, as well as pyrotechnic effects and a full range of film and television production services. They were the first Canadian company to create an award-winning film in stereoscopic 3D and stop animation, garnering Best First 3D Film at an underground film festival in New York City in 2012 for Skeleton Girl. Some of their impressive credits include work on the locally filmed television series Heartland and Hell on Wheels, as well as movie giant The Revenants. Beyond the film and television industry, Bleeding Art Industries custom fabrications can be found at military training simulations, museums, zoos, airports, and educational institutions. They have won many awards for clients with worldwide recognition for their high level of quality and expertise. As a unique and locally owned business, Bleeding Art Industries is a very worthy recipient of this year's Commerce Award. Leo Weiser, please come forward to accept your award. not that scary. I need my glasses because I'm getting old. So your worship, councillors, fellow jury, uh, fellow nominees, jury members, award winners, ladies and gentlemen. My business partner Becky Scott and I are honoured to receive this award. It was 16 years ago Becky and I had a vision. Both of us were coming from a theatre arts background and we knew that Calgary had so much to offer in untapped natural resources. Now, I have to be clear on this, that I'm in no way associated with oil and gas and actually have little interest in pipelines. We saw that the arts and entertainment business in Calgary was completely undervalued. Our vision was to start a company that would compete on a world stage by offering high quality products, services, creative content with a uniquely Canadian style. And I guess, yes, some horror in there as well. In short, we wanted to create cool. We didn't want to be limited by what we did not know, and we did 3D, or be told what we couldn't do. We were inventors, we were tinkerers, artists, hackers, performers, and most of all, we were business people. For fundamentally, we understand that our work is called show business. We've made it through 14 years of ups and downs, and we are just beginning to see the results of our work reverberate around the world. I think I am wrong, however, uh, when I say we're not interested in pipelines. We very much are. We're interested in the pipeline of people, creativity, stories, images, and ideas that we can offer up to the world. We are a resource sector. We are natural resources, and we can only be found here in Calgary. And we're also a resource that needs more cultivation and investment, and we will work to do that. And in doing so, we will create cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Leo, and congratulations to, 
congratulations to both you and Becky, so thank you. Um, Councillor Chabot will please come forward and present the next award. Uh, thank you, Councillor Putmans. Every once in a while, I get the pleasure of introducing recipients that I've gotten to know, and this year I get the pleasure of introducing two recipients that I've gotten to know and befriend. So uh, our next award is the Community Advocate Award, which is awarded to an individual who has made a significant volunteer contribution to the community. Patricia McLeod is this year's award recipient. Calgary lawyer Patricia McLeod is widely recognized as a community builder with in-depth knowledge and experience in governance and regulatory matters. Her leadership and community service is evident by her commitment of volunteer time and business expertise to a diverse group of nonprofit boards and social agencies in Calgary. Some of Patricia's current positions are with the YWCA, Calgary Economic Development, Calgary Film Centre, Sea Space Projects Inc., Calgary Girls Choir, and Vibrant Communities Calgary. As YWCA Board Chair, Patricia was instrumental in assisting with the sale of the YWCA block downtown in 2015. This landmark deal is one of the largest downtown transactions in recent history. Beyond Patricia's contribution of legal and business expertise, she is unanimously appreciated for her ability to lead, inspire, and share her enthusiasm in projects of benefit to all Calgarians. Patricia, would you please come forward to accept this year's award? Nobody else seems nervous when they come up here. Uh, thank you so much, Councillor Chabot. We are on a board together, and uh, it's very special that you presented that. Um, I would also like to thank the Selection Committee for granting me this wonderful award, and my nominator, Ken Lima Coelho, and uh, my references who supported me in receiving this honor. Uh, when I got the phone call that I was uh, getting this award, I was very surprised, and I was in a meeting, and I saw the city of Calgary was all that came up on my phone. And I, uh, I have to admit, what went through my head at that moment was, uh, oh, rats, the neighbors have called 311 again. <laughs> so, needless to say, when I called back, because of course I didn't answer it, uh, I, was, I was very, very pleased that it was Connie, I believe, and, and uh, I was told about this. So I'm truly, truly humbled and honoured to be in the uh, company of these great Calgarians who have contributed so much to the city, and it's very inspiring me to, uh, to me to continue. I've had the privilege to work with a number of extraordinary organizations, uh, many of which were described in my introduction. These organizations are really just comprised of people, staff members, executive board directors, volunteers, fundraisers, financial supporters, and others, all of whom work hard, really hard, every day for the betterment and enrichment of our city and its citizens. And without their crucial contributions, I could not even have been considered for this award, and I thank them. As I've had the opportunity to be part of these organizations, I've learned that we only make meaningful strides forward in our complex challenges when we interconnect with each other, are willing to listen and to learn from each other and try new approaches and to take risks and even to fail. We, we need to fail sometimes. The opportunities I have had combine my passion for governance and ethical leadership with groups that build and strengthen our community and have offered me the chance to have an impact in Calgary making it the place it is, a diverse, inclusive, vibrant city in which to make a living, and more importantly, a community in which to make a life. Finally, I would like to acknowledge my daughters, Katie and Noelle, and my husband, Dan, who are here this evening, as well as friends here and at home, and thank them for their understanding and patience in sharing my time with what I'm sure to them feels like the entire city. I hope you girls know that a huge part of my motivation is building a great community for you. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you once again, Patricia, and congratulations. I'm now delighted to present our next award for the Community Advocate Organization. It goes to an organization for outstanding service to the community by implementing, supporting, or assisting local programs. Congratulations to this year's recipient, the Calgary Catholic Immigration Society, also known as CCIS. CCIS has provided settlement and integrated services to immigrants and refugees in southern Alberta for over three decades. With more than 1,500 volunteers who collectively speak 60 languages, the organization works collaboratively with many Calgary groups to integrate newcomers into schools, workplace, and the community. Each year, they welcome and serve 11,000 clients through their 70 plus pro programs. To appreciate the achievement of this organization, CCIS was selected to lead the settlement of over 1,400 Syrian refugees arriving in Calgary in early 2016. Their efforts did not go unnoticed, with Calgary being recognized internationally for their outstanding work in assisting these new Canadians. We are pleased to acknowledge the 35th anniversary of CCIS and their remarkable work in the community to ensure new Calgarians are able to regain and maintain a life of dignity and self-worth. Would Farah Bors, Burjandian, um, please come forward to receive this year's award. Thank you. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a great honor to be here and accepting this award on behalf of my colleagues and some of them are sitting here, my board member. Thank you for joining us tonight. I think we have a city that uh, we bring about 18,000 people come here. They come here because they want to new, start a new life. They will come here with their fears and their hopes. I think that is happening across the country, across the world. And I think a city that can recognize those fears and eliminate them and try to help them to build on their, basically, their dreams. I think that's the city that's gonna benefit. And Calgary exemplifies one of those cities, and we've been honored to be really part of this great movement to create a welcoming community in Calgary. 35 years ago, a handful of volunteers, they looked and they saw many Vietnamese refugees come into the city. They felt they have to do something. And 35 years now, we are again a large organization, very committed and benefiting from all the support from the city, from a cooperation, from many, many volunteers that we have, have done quite well, I think, for our city, that we can all benefit from that. So again, let's work together. I'm really quite impressed that we're recognizing advocacy. And I think the society that they don't recognize and value their advocate and advocacy is a very dangerous society. Thank you. Congratulations again to CCIS for the tremendous accomplishments. I now like to uh, call on uh, Councillor Jones to award the next, uh, present the next awards. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Chabot. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. It's also a pleasure to uh, present the Education Award. The Education Award is presented to a Calgarian who has enhanced learning opportunities or brought recognition to Calgary due to outstanding academic achievement. This year's recipient of the Education Award is David Workland. David Workland is recognized in our community for his strong leadership principles and commitment to education, enabling youth to succeed to their fullest potential. Through the Workland Foundation established in 2006, he and his daughter Deanna founded the Empowering Minds program. The foundation also supports programs such as the Workland Youth Leadership Center at the University of Calgary, Junior Achievement, and TELUS Spark. 
David's commitment is most widely recognized in his generous donation to the University of Calgary Education Facility in 2013 to be renamed the Workland School of Education. Recognizing that learning is the right of all children, the Foundation also supports international initiatives to improve the quality of education in impoverished countries. David's education to, dedication to education in our city is unprecedented. By investing in opportunities that help our young people reach their highest potential, David in turn influences our future leaders and city in the whole. David, please come forward and accept your award. Well, good evening, Mayor Nenshi, councillors, my family, my friends, of course, my fellow recipients of the Calgary Awards, and gentlemen, or ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for this recognition of this award. It's great. We recently visited a school, the Calgary Arts Academy, with a unique concept of learning. Kids go to school to have fun while learning through the arts. The dropout rate is nearly non-existent while the school ranks in the top 8% of the provincial testing. The children are said to develop more confidence and have higher self-esteem through this type of learning. It reminds me of a program we have sponsored for many years called Empowering Minds, where teenagers have the opportunity to improve their self-confidence through leadership and empowerment training. Thank you. Congratulations, David. I'd now like to call on Councillor Chu to present the next award. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Our next presentation is the Heritage Award. This award recognizes an individual who has made an ex ex extraordinary contribution to the promotion of award awareness and or preservation of Calgary heritage. We are pleased to recognize Harry Sanders for this award. Please redirect your attention to the screens for to learn more about Harry. When you meet Harry Sanders, you recognize immediately why he is affectionately known as Harry the Historian. Not only does he have a vast knowledge of Calgary's local history, but he is a captivating storyteller. Born in Drumheller, where his father was the owner and operator of the White House Hotel, Harry's first interest in history was tweaked by an old photograph of the original hotel that was destroyed by fire in 1937. His curiosity got the better of him, so at age 13, he could be found at the Calgary Public Library poring over the 1937 issue of the Calgary Herald. Not surprisingly, Harry graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Calgary. In the early years, he worked at the Calgary Public Library and in the archives at both the City of Calgary and Glenbow Museum, and since the mid-90s, has worked as a self-employed contract researcher and writer. Many of the historic interpretive signs found on notable buildings and sites around Calgary are from Harry's work. He is a popular keynote speaker and often gives tours for different events around Calgary. For over 25 years, Harry has contributed considerably to the understanding and appreciation of Calgary heritage for the benefit of all Calgarians.
Perry, the historian, please come forward to accept your award. Your Worship, Councillor Chu, Councillors, uh, Awards Jury, fellow recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, four years before I was born, someone on Council suggested that City Hall's exterior be changed. Grant McEwen replied, we've developed a strange hatred for old buildings. So much has changed since then. That building's current heritage restoration demonstrates the City's commitment to its heritage. So does this award category. And our mayor and his council colleagues regularly invoke history, not only in speeches, but in governance. I work by myself, but not alone. To turn a phrase, you didn't research that. I thank inspirations like Grant McEwen and Hugh Dempsey, the mentors and colleagues who supported my nomination, Don Smith, Aretha Van Herk, and Rob Graham, and colleagues and friends throughout the heritage community. I'm here with my mother, Miriam, who's uh, long-time memories through the decades of Calgary are my secret arsenal of stories. My children, whom I hope will return to this room in 68 years' time when they open the uh, time capsule just on the other side of the council chamber. And my nominator, my wife, Kirsten Olson, who can drive a tractor, create a meal, run an organization, raise a village of children, and make one man's life extraordinary. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you to the city and the people of Calgary. Thank you, Harry. I would like to invite Councillor Keating forward to uh, present the next award. Thank you, Councillor Chu. I'm delighted to present the Youth Award. This award recognizes a youth whose exceptional achievements have brought recognition to or improved the quality of life in our city. The focus is on volunteer and community contributions, not academic achievement. The University of Calgary is a gold sponsor of this award. This year's recipient is Andrew Min. Since 2013, Andrew Min has been a valued member of Youth Central's Youth Volunteer Corps Steering Committee. I got it. <laughs> Where he was not only supported, but established programs through his leadership has spearheaded new projects such as the Speak Your Mind project, a social media campaign to open a discussion on mental illness and health issues. In 2014, he co-founded the EqualEarn Foundation, a student-run organization that offers free tutoring for, and school supplies for children that come from low-income immigrant or refugee backgrounds. He's a member of the Mayor's Youth Council and the Alberta Education Ministry's Student Advisory Council, where he is both, in both cases, he attended conferences as a representative for youth and education matters. At his high school, Andrew has been a member of the Model United Nations, receiving several awards at their national conferences. He is also an avid hockey player, serving as team captain for three seasons and became a certified Hockey Alberta referee in 2013. Andrew has started his stud studies at UBC, so he is unable to be here with us this evening. Please direct your attention to the screen for his acceptance remarks. Hi everyone, this is Andrew here. I am so sorry that I'm not able to come to the award ceremony tonight. I'm here in Vancouver right now, doing my first year at UBC. And while I did want to come back to Calgary for this special occasion, things didn't work out well for me, and so unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to come. But nonetheless, I want to show my gratitude and give a shout out to the entire Calgary community who have positively impacted me the past few years. I know for a fact that I wouldn't be able to receive this award from the city of Calgary if not for the people that have inspired me throughout this journey. I also want to give special thanks to my nominator, Ross from New Central, as well as close friends and family 
Uh, and I want to give particular thanks to my sister Martina, who will be accepting the award on my behalf. Uh, so once again, thanks everyone. I hope you guys have a great evening, and I want to congratulate all the other recipients for their hard work to the community. Thank you. Martina Min, please come forward to accept the award on behalf of your brother. I'm very pleased to present the final two awards of the evening. The Grant McEwen Lifetime Achievement Award honours an individual who over the past 25 years or more has made significant contributions to the community and whose accomplishments have brought recognition to our city. The Grant McEwen Lifetime Achievement Award, of course, is named in honour of that great hero of mine, Dr. Grant McEwen, writer, environmentalist, politician. Uh, I started my job in this role under Grant McEwen's watchful gaze, uh, and I think of him and his example every single day. City Council created this award to commemorate Dr. McEwen's 90th birthday in 1992. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a tradition for Heather McEwen Foran, daughter of the great Grant, late Grant McEwen, to co-present this award with me. Unfortunately, Heather's unable to join us this evening, but she has sent us a video message. I'm very proud of the award. I'm very proud of what my father and my mother too did for the citizens of Calgary over uh, many, many years. They, were, uh, they contributed tremendously towards the growth and advancement of this city. So I'm extremely proud of the award and of my parents. The two of them together made a great contribution, I think, to, to Calgary over the years. And the award is kind of the icing on the cake too. It's a, it was a wonderful award and, and uh, I think um, I know my dad was very pleased when they gave it to him for his 90th birthday. He was very touched and very thrilled and of course he knew some of the earlier recipients and uh, um, as did I, but uh, as it's gone on I, um, I, I sort of don't know them personally the way I did some of the earlier ones. It, it, it's an award given to somebody who's been giving back to Calgary in various forms um, over a period of 25, 30, 35 years. It's pretty special because it isn't somebody that just comes and, and does something wonderful this year, but it, they have been doing these things for many, many years, and so it's a, it's a special award uh, to give and to receive. It's something that we're all very proud of, and, and it reflects, as I said, it reflects my father's legacy of uh, public service, and um, it, it's, gives other people um, the recognition which they deserve too uh, about you know public service and and uh, giving back to to society boy there, there's a lot of dad a lot of her dad in her thank you so much heather for that lovely message and this year's recipient meets all those criteria and more that you just heard from Heather. Please turn your attention back to the video screens for a vignette on this year's recipient, Mr. Ted Valentine. The Valentine family arrived in Calgary in 1911 and like most immigrant families, came with few possessions seeking a better life. Often this brought forward a strong work ethic and spirit to give back to the community in which it thrived. Ted Valentine is a wonderful example of this. Returning from the University of British Columbia to work in the family automobile business, Ted's volunteer contributions to the community began in the 1960s and have carried throughout his lifetime. Within the automobile industry, Ted served as president for the local, provincial, and national motor dealers associations with a focus on upholding professional integrity in the business, 
He also assisted in the development of standards and practices for automotive mechanic training and certification for over 20 years. But his community involvement was not just industry specific. To understand the respect he held in our city is to recognize the diversity of his roles. He served as president of the Calgary Tourist and Convention Bureau, was the business community's representative on the Discipline Committee of the Alberta Dental Association, chair of the Franchisees Association of Alberta, and airport greeter for the 1988 Olympics. Rotary Club has also been an important part of Ted's life. Beginning as the president of Rotary Club of Calgary West in 1979, through to being elected as district governor of Rotary International in 1999. Ted has been a remarkable member of our community, who sums it up in his humble and quiet manner. Volunteering is the rent we pay for our space on earth. So great to be able to honor Ted for his lifetime of achievement and the achievements and the legacy of the entire Valentine family. Ted, could you please come up? Uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and uh, Your Honor, Mayor Nenshi, uh, committee members and uh, honored councillors, uh, guests to be honored, uh, my fellow recipients, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my thanks to the committee and all who plan the Calgary Awards. I think it's a very meaningful thing in our city. It is an honor for me to be here to receive the Grant McEwen Lifetime Achievement Award. I remember meeting uh, Grant on a number of occasions, and he was certainly a man among men. I have many to thank for my presence here this evening. I go back to the 50s and 60s and my membership in the Calgary JCs. We had a very strong club and received excellent leadership training uh, in those years. After graduating from the JCs, I think they kick us out at age 40. Uh, it was uh, uh, my pleasure to be invited into Rotary International in the 70s, a membership that I continue to this day, offering the uh, opportunity to serve locally, nationally, and internationally. Certainly my thanks go to my wife and family, many of whom are here this evening, uh, my nominators, Tom and Catherine, and my staff for allowing me the opportunity to get involved. I thank you all for coming tonight. Enjoy the evening. God bless. Our final award this evening is the Citizen of the Year Award. And this award goes to an outstanding individual who has made a recent extraordinary contribution that has improved the quality of life in Calgary and whose reach in its recent achievements have brought recognition to our city. Thank you to our sponsor for this award, Oil City Press. You're going to learn a lot about a truly exceptional Calgarian in just a moment. Please turn your attention to the video screens to learn about this year's recipient, David Pickersgill. As champion for many child-related causes in Calgary, David Pickersgill is a most deserving recipient of this award. Born in Regina and obtaining a degree in engineering from McGill University, David settled with his family in Calgary and discovered a passion for helping vulnerable children who lacked a supportive role model and were, as he says, shortchanged on parenting. One of his most recognizable roles has been with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Calgary and area since 1994. 
He has been a big brother and mentor to several children and youth over the past 17 years and with his wife, also engaged in the Big Couple program. As chair of the National Board in 2011, David had a pivotal role in growing the reach of Big Brothers Big Sisters programs, both nationally and locally. His vision and expertise in governance helped create a strategic plan for guiding the organization through the next decade. But it doesn't end here. David has been a director of Children's Legal and Educational Resource Center since 2011, vice president and director of Safe Haven Foundation of Canada since 2007, and honorary ambassador for Education Matters since 2000. He volunteers with the Alex Dental Health Bus and has contributed to the Rocky Mountain YMCA, Governors for Children Advocacy Society, the Street Team Safe House Society, and Discovery House Women's Shelter. For David, no undertaking is too big or too small. Whether as donor, mentor, leader, or advocate, he is a prime example of the positive impact one person can make in our community. I'm in, I'm in the midst of launching a new program to celebrate Canada's 150th birthday. It's called Three Things for Canada, encouraging every citizen to give three acts of service to our nation as a birthday present for our nation next year. Those acts can be big, they can be small, but I got to tell you, the last time I saw David was on video because he is one of our inspiring heroes, showing people that small acts and big acts make a huge difference. David, please come up. Thank you, Mayor. A while ago at a, at a Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, national convention, there was a workshop on, on how to make uh, presentations effective. And one of the hints uh, for doing that was called the, the rule of three. Some of you know the rule. It's not the one where you have three seconds to pick a french fry off the floor and not get sick. Uh, it's um, what the rule of three says, if, if you really want your, your audience to remember your message, you tell them what it is you're gonna tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. Now, applying that rule to this honor tonight, um, it's not about me. With respect, it's not about us. Uh, what it's really all about is the kids. It's all about the kids. It's all about the kids. What a night. I hope that every one of you is as inspired as I am by these incredible Calgarians that we got to meet tonight and inspired to do just a little bit more for our own community ourselves. Three things. This concludes our awards presentation this evening. Thank you to all of our recipients. Thank you to all of our guests for joining us this evening. Thank you to our presenters, to our sponsors, and a special thanks to Shaw TV for not just bringing the Calgary Awards live to our community, but for exposing these wonderful Calgarians to so many who can't be with us tonight. And on behalf of my colleagues on Calgary City Council, and I get to say this because I'm the mayor, on behalf of all the citizens of Calgary, <laughs> congratulations to every one of our award recipients. I'm not just proud to live in a city where so many remarkable individuals and organizations willingly give their time and effort to make our city better, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because I get to live in a city with you in it. And that makes this city so much more special. That's what makes this city work. People who are dynamic, compassionate, environmentally friendly, and who make change. Thank you all for being here tonight.